Thank you for that extraordinarily kind introduction. I'm a little verklempt at these pictures because I have them at my home about this big. And to see mom's face on the screen at that scale, she was a very great lady, and I think that is the scale at which she should be contemplated and remembered. Please notice the uh, date that she went to Wellesley College. She left her home in a small town in Pennsylvania, a very shy, very cultured, terribly smart, very sheltered, uh, very, very idealistic young woman in the fall of 1941, traveled to near Boston to attend this wonderful uh, women's college. And the motto of Wellesley College, non ministrari sed ministrare. One of my Latin students in the audience will recognize the passive and active infinitives. Not to be served, but to serve. Which was a perfect fit for mom's character. And she set about uh, her college adventure as an English major, uh, started uh, with her gentle intellectual plans. Uh, the day after her 18th birthday, as she was finishing her first semester at Wellesley, Pearl Harbor was attacked. And the world changed in an instant. And the college and all of its students were renewed in their commitment not to be served, but to serve. Mom changed her major from English to uh, home economics because she believed that young women with good educations could serve the republic by running their homes and raising their families in light of the most uh, forward-looking, progressive scientific principles and, uh, and practices. And she tutored uh, factory girls. She appreciated the fact that women of other economic um, classes were contributing to the war effort in ways that she did not. So she tutored factory girls in English, risking her Republican father's opinion that she was becoming a communist. Uh, and after graduate, and uh, you'll notice she graduated just before the end of the war. So her entire uh, college experience was in the spirit of public service and dedication, not to be served, but to serve. Uh, sure enough, as she rose, uh, raised her four children, she did practice a very modern, very democratic, very forward-looking form of parenting. And although she never worked outside the home as, during our childhood, she ran the League of Women Voters. She ran the conservation groups locally. She ran the parent-teacher association in every public school we attended. She taught Sunday school. She was an elder in the church not to be served, but to serve. That was absolutely the principle of her life. Uh, she didn't have to work when the children were grown, but you'll see she went back to school and became a social worker. She got a master's in social work and was a family therapist, and a, uh, uh, she worked in child protective services, immersing herself uh, as a grandmother in uh, cultural and societal contexts very different from anywhere she had ever lived, confronting with incredible courage uh, situations of great stress and great uh, suffering in society around her. And around the time she started her career, I started my career here at Towson. And she started meeting my students and my colleagues. She, I can't say how much she adored Towson students whom she met. Uh, she always thought my students were funny and smart and engaging, and she pondered something she'd been aware of but had never had this personal contact with, the difference between her life, in which her parents could simply write a check and send her to Wellesley, and the lives of my students, who were sacrificing and working their way through college, and she was very touched by that. To the extent that at the time of her death, I thought the best way to remember her would be to set up a scholarship at Towson University. It wasn't my plan, but it has become part of the culture in the Department of Foreign Languages that when there's a special event in the department, a retirement or a death in the family of a colleague, faculty will make contributions to this scholarship fund. And contrary to popular belief, foreign language professors do not make a whole lot of money. <laughs> but they dig deep for this scholarship. Uh, and this, basically, students, is just my way of saying um, every single scholarship at Towson University, every dollar that has come to you, represents a story like this. 
Uh, it's another way of saying that the forebears or the elders or the grown-ups, people who have never met you, people who know you as well as your music teacher or your French teacher, really, really, really believe in what you're doing. Make very concrete gestures to support it. Have immense pride and belief in you. And uh, as Dr. Chandler implied, uh, the time is soon coming when you launch and you become part of this story. Your pictures will be up on that screen sometime soon. A few, a few students in this room are going to be filthy rich. I can just feel it. <laughs> and when Towson University calls you, you need to remember, you need to remember that your education was vouchsafed to you not to be served, but to serve. Thank you. <laughs>